Hello, this is the first of the proof by induction videos for OCR Pure Core AS Further Maths, and it provides an introduction to mathematical induction. Let's start by looking at this example. So, the first four terms of this pattern, 1 over 1 times 2, would give us a half. If we continue the pattern, we see that we get a half plus a sixth, which adds to four sixths, will be cancelled down to two thirds, two over three. Continuing again, we would have a half plus a sixth plus a twelfth, which would give us nine twelfths, or cancelling down three quarters, three over four. Perhaps you're starting to see the pattern now. In this fourth line, 1 over 20, we're adding extra, gives us 48 over 60, which cancels down to 4 over 5. If you want to stop and think about the next two terms for yourselves, pause now. But my guess would be 5 over 6 and then 6 over 7. If we were to generalise this, then it looks as if for n terms in this pattern, the answer will always sum to n over n plus 1. Unlike science, where theories may be based on a high number of observations, if we want to prove something in mathematics, we need to show that it is true for all possible cases. Now, you could check as many cases as you like for the previous example, or you could get a computer to check, but it wouldn't prove the result. You may feel confident the result's correct, but you do not have a proof. So let's discuss different methods of mathematical proof that you may already have come across. Well, there is the proof by exhaustion, checking all possible cases. You can't use this method if you have an infinite number of cases, or for example, an infinite number of numbers, but you could use proof by exhaustion to prove something like 97 is prime. Alternatively, you can do proof by deduction. So this is when you use known results to deduce further results. So example, using the sum of r formula to prove the result for the sum of r cubed. Thirdly, you could prove by contradiction. You assume that the result is not true and then use this assumption to deduce a contradiction to the original assumption. This can be used for something such as square root of 2 is rational to prove that is irrational. Looking at our example where we were trying to show that if we sum that particular pattern for n terms, we would end up the result n over n plus 1. We could go on checking for every positive integer, but we'd never get to the end of the list. So we won't know if we'll ever find a countable example. Therefore, we can't use the previous methods of proof that we've talked about, i.e. you know, exhaustion or deduction or contradiction. So we need to think of a new method. This new method is called mathematical proof by induction. It works rather like toppling dominoes. For them all to topple, then what do we have to do? You may like to pause here to think about this for yourselves. If you can imagine a long line of dominoes, to make them all topple, set up all the dominoes so that each domino will knock the next one over and then simply knock the first domino. This translates to three steps within mathematical proof by induction. For the first step, we need to show that if the conjecture is true for any individual number, then it is also true for the next one. Step two, check it is true for the first one. And then step three, we can state the result is true for all integers greater than the first one. Well, those steps in that order were using the analogy of the dominoes. In fact, what we normally do is reverse steps one and two, which wouldn't be any good for the dominoes, but it does make a more straightforward proof when they're answering our questions. Going back to our example, let's say that that pattern for n terms we denote by Sn. 
So our conjecture, or the result we wish to prove, is that Sn equals n over n plus 1. The first step is that we must show that the result is true for n equals 1. Let's have a think. S1 will equal 1 over 1 times 2. So in other words, just that first term. Well, we know that's a half. And we can write it in this form, 1 over 1 plus 1, which, of course, is equivalent to n over n plus 1 when n equals 1. Therefore, we've checked that the result is true for n equals 1. So this is the completion of step 1 of our proof by induction. Moving on then to step 2, we will assume that the result is true for n equals k. So in other words, what we're saying is that sk equals k over k plus 1. That is what we are assuming. If you were doing a particular question, you may wish to write it out slightly more in, in full, such as below. Now that we've stated that assumption, we go on to consider the, the next domino, the next um, n value, which will be n equals k plus 1. So here we have that we know sk equals k over k plus 1. That is our assumption. So that's our, what we have assumed. And now we're looking at s, e, s to the k plus 1. In other words, this is when n equals k plus 1. Well, what we're doing in effect is adding this extra term here. All right, well, hopefully you can see that that's an extension of the pattern. But of course, what we also know is that all this bit here is the same as SK. So we are able to rewrite all of that as SK. And then all we have is this one extra term. Now, this is where we can use our assumption. We have assumed that sk equals k over k plus 1. So we are using our previous assumption. And then we have, obviously, the extra term. Looking for a common denominator, we'll see that that is the k plus 1, k plus 2. So we will have had to have multiplied the k by the k plus 2. And then we've obviously still got what our 1. So we've now written that as 1 fraction. That then becomes k squared plus 2k plus 1 over k plus 1, k plus 2. And if we factorise that, we will see that we get k plus 1 times k plus 1 over k plus 1, k plus 2. And we'll be able to cancel those two down. All right, so I'm going to move up here now. So that, what we find then is that s to the k plus 1 actually equals k plus 1 over k plus 2. So that's where that's come from. But I'm going to write the k plus 2 as k plus 1 plus another 1. So hopefully you can see that this is in that same form of n over n plus 1. Okay, so on this slide it's written out a little bit more neatly and there's a little bit more room to use. So let me just rewrite that again as k plus 1 and k plus 1 plus 1. Well, that's in the form n over n plus 1 when n equals k plus 1. Therefore, we can state that if the result is true for n equals k, it is also true for n equals k plus 1. This then completes step 2. So based on our assumption, 
that n equals k, we have now proven that if that n equals k assumption is true, then the next step or the next domino um, has also been knocked over. All we need to do now is our step three or concluding step. And this is a statement that will be made again and again when you're doing, using mathematical proof by induction. And it goes something like this. So if the conjecture or result is true for n equals k, then it's also true for n equals k plus 1. As the result is true when n equals 1, which you remember we proved in step 1, it must be true for all integers n greater or equal to 1 by mathematical induction. Just to summarise then, these are the three steps in mathematical proof by induction. Step 1, check it's true for the first one. Usually we use n equals 1, but there may be some questions when you would prefer to use n equals 2 or a slightly higher value. Step 2, show that if a conjecture result is true for any individual number, say n equals k, then it's also true for the next one n equals k plus 1. And the final step 3, which is a statement to the effect that as a result, it's true for n equals 1. And if it's true for n equals k, it is also true for n equals k plus 1. Then it must be true for all integers n greater than or equal to 1 by mathematical induction. In the next video, we will be looking at session 2.2, using induction to prove results about matrices.